Good morning, good afternoon, good night. I am Ryan Cook. Whatever time you're watching this video, thanks for watching Common Sense Fishing. I'm still out there. Oh my God. Perfect, I like that. Oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God, get the net, get the net. It's a DD, get the net, bro, please get the net. Oh my God, this is a DD. Hey, what's up guys? Nick the Informative Fisherman here and you're watching Common Sense Fishing. Check it out. Bam. What you looking at? All right, good morning, good afternoon, good night, whatever time you're watching this. Thanks for watching Common Sense Fishing. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got another whiteboard video for you today. I'm going to show you my favorite pre-spawn and spawn lures, what colors, what ways I use them, and hopefully this information will help out. No matter where you're at, just try to apply it to your area because different areas of the country are gonna warm up at different times. Different lakes are gonna act differently. You got highland reservoirs, lowland reservoirs, river systems, natural lakes, ponds, all that good stuff. So it's gonna fish a little bit differently and at different times, but the same principles apply. Water temperatures, as soon as they get above say 56, 55, them bass should be moving. In our lakes, they're still a little set down, um, but sometimes they pick up and start moving as soon as it gets say uh, 49, 50, and some they don't really do it until 56, 57. But anyways, from that say 50 to 58 degree water temperature, it's kicking those fish on. They should be going into pre-spawn and then soon into spawn. Also moon phases and how much light there is. And another important factor I believe with the spawn is how cold the nights are. So that's a really big one, especially in lowland reservoirs and shallower bodies of water when the nights get cold. And even though the days are warm, they, that, that can cool that water off. While if the nights are, are semi-warm, kind of humid, there's some cloud cover, but they're warm, or even if it's bluebird skies, but you got some warm nights, that water is gonna maintain its temperature easier and better, and it's gonna warm up quicker. So, all right, now to my lures. I've got them all right here. I'm gonna show you guys how I rig them, what I do, and what my favorite ones are. So, we're gonna start with the Cinco, all right? Guys who fish the Delta, ponds, Lowland reservoirs, you know all about the Cinco, right? Problem is, there's a lot of guys in the reservoirs and the highland reservoirs, some of them don't throw it. Um, deep water takes forever to get down because a lot of guys in the Delta fish this thing wacky rig or uh, weightless, right? Well, in a deeper body water, you just got to either put a nail rate in it, fish a Nico rig, um, you can throw a Texas rig. There's a lot of different ways you can throw the Cinco. And I want to talk about a couple different types, right? So you got your traditional regular Cinco here. And this is, I believe this may be a Yum Dinger or a Bass Pro Shops version and not an actual Yamamoto. So, but a little stick bait, right? Then you've got some, you know, you've got your fours, you got five, six, sevens, you got big Cinco's, you know? So there's a lot of different size to choose from. You've also got kind of a smaller stick baits that usually kind of almost have a half, a cut tail, the cut tail worms. I'll use these like a stick bait as well because this little cut tail gives me a little extra action. I like how the worm narrows and you see how it kind of naturally wobbles while I'm holding it while the sink goes a little more kind of in place. All right, so I'll use these two different colors depending on water clarity and, and what I'm feeling. Now, if you're getting bit and you're having a hard time connecting, I swear a Ned rig might work or just go to a smaller Cinco. Downsize your Cinco and that might, might do the trick. Now, again, we got Nico rig, wacky rig, all kinds of different ways, but I'm gonna show you with a creature bait, how I rig my Cinco's and what I usually throw them on. I like to use what are called, let me pick one up here. <clears throat> I like to use U heads or what are called swing heads. It's kind of like a swing head jig, but there's no skirt. I like to use these style hooks 
with a football head style weight. If you go to Walmart or anywhere else, you can get the Eagle Claws and they're circles like this. So the Eagle Claw is gonna be like this, the old school ones. You get these, they're gonna be football head. I like these a lot more for when I'm fishing in rocks and dirt. Don Pedro, McClure, New Maloney's. I'd use this one in the Delta to avoid the weeds. This one will collect too many weeds on it. So hope that helps. Now, one thing I wanna talk about really quick is in the pre-spawn, I like to use creature baits as well as Cinco's, right? And this is what I like to throw them on. Now, if you go to Walmart or wherever and you get the round head, the ones I like to use at the Delta, here's the problem. It's a more of a worm hook, straight shank. This is good for like a robo worm. So let me show you what happens if you put a creature bait on it. So this is how you rig a creature bait up, by the way. All right. You look and you find out where the hook is going to penetrate and bend it. Put the hook through, pull it back and then take the rubber or the you know plastic and pull it up a little bit make it level and then push it back down and that gives you a nice smooth surface so that when you're holding your lure it's like this right here and look no way to get snagged right here's a problem with this though when a bass grabs onto it and bites it there's not a lot of room for compression so if you're using a thicker bait right like a creature bait or even something bigger like a crawdad or something when the bass bites this and you pull you can lose a lot of fish because when the bass bites down there's not a big gap for the compression so that when it bites you can actually pull that hook out right it takes a lot of force now you do let's show you this kind you've got a much wider gap so when the bass comes up and bites that, you've got a lot more compression room so that when the bait gets popped down, that hook is right there ready. Bam! And it locks in. I like this style a lot better. But again, when I'm fishing weeds and stuff, this one can be a bit of a hindrance. So I have to go to this one at the Delta. So which I'll usually do is instead of throwing a creature bait, Go to Cinco. So we'll show you what that looks like right here. <clears throat> Take the Cinco. I'll use the skinnier one. We're going to put it on. Same way, right? See where the hook will go naturally right there. Bend the worm. Put it on. Hook pops out. You take the worm. Kind of lift it up. Boom. And there you go. So also a double video on how to rig a rig up a worm right so anyways now you look at this and when the fish hits it you've got more compression because the bait is not quite as big so when it it's easier to expose it now make sense hope that little tip trick helps out and makes sense if you're throwing these straight worms i recommend using skinny cinco's robo worms stuff like that if you want to throw a crawdad or a creature bait I strongly recommend these type. But again, if you can find them with a round head, that'll work good in weeds or even a weed head, slightly pointed like a weed jig. Um, but these are meant for used in rocks and dirt. So anyways, spent too much time on the first one. So the Cinco is a very versatile lure that a lot of people use and they use it many different ways. Nail weights, Nico rig, wacky rig, all kinds of cool tricks you can do with the Cinco. Okay, so we're done with that one. Cinco, it's my number one pre-spawn lure to cover water and throw it many different ways. I'll throw it on a heavier weight. I can get it down deep and work it like a Ned rig. I can throw it up shallow. I can use it weightless, almost like a jerk bait or a fluke, right? And, and, and bring it through the water column like a jerk bait, let it die slow and then pop it a few times. And man, you ever seen a Cinco dart and go, it looks just like a jerk bait. So a Cinco is an awesome lure. All right, on to my next one, square bill. So I want to start by giving away one of my 
And I've told you guys before, but th this is to me one of the most important things is using the correct baits. So if you're square bill fishing, one of my favorite square bills is going to be the Ish Monroe River to Sea series. And out of those, my favorites, I like the Papa and the small. So the, you know, the bigger 2.5 and then the smaller one. So cold blooded. This lure right here, I've got double digits on and monsters. I mean, multiple monsters. And I also love the bluegill pattern. So the perch pattern. I forget what name this one is right here, actually, but it's the same thing. The Biggie Papa. Um, this one is, again, it looks like a perch pattern, but I've caught many big fish on this as well. So, but this definitely number one go to reactionary bait for spawn pre-spawn post spawn i'll use this sucker now until almost august so i hope that one helps now how do we use it square bill you want to make sure that you're giving it different cadences and some different things to factor in are you using it right because sometimes the bass really want that square bill slowly worked Sometimes they want that squirrel, square bill burned. And another thing you can do is use it almost like a jerk bait, where when you're reeling it, you give it jerks and tugs here and there, and then you can stop here and there. There's one where uh, you can reel at different speeds, and then every once in a while, speed your reel up. A lot of different ways to use that square bill. One of the most important things to, to know when fishing the square bill, so we're gonna take your attention down here, is when you have a shoreline, Get your boat, instead of being out here, right, and casting at the shore, what you really need to do with a square bill, right, is get your boat up along the shore, parallel. Right up along that shoreline like that and cover the shore like that with a square bill. Do not cast at the shore and bring it out. That is, in my opinion, the worst way to use it. <clears throat> All right, so square bill, relatively simple. You're gonna cover water and look for structure you can bump the square bill off of or run it alongside of. If you've got weeds, throw it on a weed edge. Got tulies, throw it in the tule edge. If you've got big riprap and rock, Throw it right alongside that stuff. So this is not an open water lure, although it can work like that. So we've got the square bill done. Next is a jerk bait. And with the jerk bait, we've got a lot of different options. You've got suspended, you've got floating, you've got slow sinking, you've got big, you've got small. Try to remember pre-spawn is the time to throw the bigger baits. That's what I would recommend. Most of the baits that's still alive in the lakes are big. Crawfish are big. Bluegills are big, right? The uh, shad, anything left over, it's all big right now because they all spawn in, let's say, March or April all the way up until, let's say, uh, June, July, different species of fish, right? But throughout that whole winter period, all the babies are getting smashed and eaten. So right now in pre-spawn, what's left is mostly big. That's also why you want to throw bigger baits. Also to weed out those little dinks and to try to go for the bigger fish. So I would recommend if I'm throwing a jerk bait, you know, I'm going to start with something like this. Mega Bass is a great jerk bait. This is a KVD Strike King jerk bait. This is where you can start out, you know, nice cheap jerk bait that works pretty well. And then you can graduate up to the, um, you know, to like the Mega Bass or uh, there's a lot of different other ones. You know, there's there's a lot of a lot of cool jerk baits you can use. You know, there's uh, many different types. So you want to go through them and cycle through them to find out what works for you and your fishery. For example, in a shallow fishery, you may want to go with a floating. In a deeper fishery, you may want to use a suspended or a slow sinking. So just got to try to figure out what you're fishing. Are you in a bunch of weeds and sticks and wood? Are you fishing a place like Clear Lake? I'd recommend probably a floating. If you're fishing McClure, Don Pedro, I'd recommend a suspended or even a slow sink. So hopefully that helps. Remember, always jerk 
the jerk bait on a little bit of a slack line or else it is not going to have that side to side action it will just pull forward like a like a crankbait so uh this is another sleeper lure don't forget to toss the jerk baits all right now following along that same kind of pattern here these two could almost go into the same category so to speak but i'm going to break them down differently for you We've got our swim baits. You know, you've got your medium sized ones, you got smaller ones, and you got your big ones, your huds, and stuff like that. Matter of fact, let me go get one for you. Be right back. All right, folks, I went and grabbed some swim baits again for you guys. So, you know, I like to throw this nice little Kitek on an underspin or just by itself or on, on aid rigs. But, you know, sometimes. It's good to throw some swim baits right some bigger ones i'm not a big eight to ten inch swim bait thrower yet i'm still working on sixes and eights and stuff like that but what i'd recommend is if you're new to the swim bait game you know go out go to walmart start with some bottom walkers start with some three four inch ones use the kitex and uh, slow roll those first now if you're going to get into that open water swim bait game if you're going to be throwing the big ones, I'd recommend starting with something cheap like this. However, the problem with this swim bait is it's got these trebles on the bottom. So this cannot make contact with the bottom. It's just going to snag up constantly. So this is an open water swim bait. More to be used kind of like a square bill or something. And run this alongside big trees, rocks, boulders, stuff like that. These are not expensive. So you can lose them left and right. And hey, when you do get bit, you're probably going to hook up with this though. So that's, you know, one that I would recommend for beginners. Now we've got something like this, kind of like a knockoff HUD, right? With a nice big fat boot tail there. And, uh, you know, it's got the, the spot where you can put a stinger or something like that down here. But I, I like to throw these just like this. And last but not least good old huddleston right you got plenty of these here so nice huddleston this one's still in the bag hasn't been used yet so i figured i'd show you this guy so uh this is the regular six not the 68 this is the 66 so or just the six inch with the regular tail i mean this isn't the 68 special but hey get out there toss these guys and once you can start sticking them on those then i'd recommend going for the hinkles and going for the depths and going for all that good stuff you know unless you got the money go over the good stuff first it's up to you um i'm starting with the other stuff <laughs> i can't afford to lose 250 bucks every time you lose a swim bait all right last but not least before we leave the swim bait category i want to talk about underspins now traditionally this is what you think of when you when you see an underspin something similar to this right okay with a willow blade you know you throw it on your kitek and away you go now this is killer but something i've noticed and i like to throw in some dirty water stained water or pre-spawn when you get some of that rainwater coming in and muddying up stuff check this one out colorado blade with some flash so i really like using something like this here in dirtier water this would be cleaner water so i hope that makes sense and that's our swim bait category so we'll move on something that i love a lot the spinner bait one of my favorite lures that i have not been tossing for the last few years you guys have not been seeing me stick many fish on them because I haven't been throwing them. I plan on going back to them this year and I'm going to stick some big ones. I love the spinner baits, one of my favorite lures. So many different ways to use them, so many different spinner baits, different trailers. I remember back in the 90s when I was a kid and I'd lose my skirt. That's when I would put fake little swim bait paddle tail things before they had the Kitex and I would use them just like that and just smack them. So. Uh, another little thing that I would use a spinner bait that a lot of guys don't do is you believe it or not toss this out and work it like a jig just throw it out let it flutter down and then just pop it up and let it flutter down and do the same thing just lift it up off the bottom enough to where you get these blades going and then let it fall again and then 
what happens is, is in the tip of your pole, you can feel the vibration of the blades. If the tip of the pole doesn't feel right and you don't feel any vibration or it feels too heavy, your line's tangled up and you need to give it a few jerks, kind of like with a uh, rattle trap, and you may be able to get it undone without retrieving in your cast. But spinner baits. I like painted blades for dirty water and the Delta, stuff like that. I like stuff like this for clear water. Now, before we go on the spinner bait topic, a um, lot of different ways especially slow rolling them later in the summer you can burn them a lot quicker and almost work them like top water like a buzz bait but i'd recommend keep it on the bottom slow roll make contact with stuff just like a square bill and a swim bait use it along structure trees this is a great uh, bait for pulling bass out of out of cover and trees to come hit it so it's like a little mini A-Rig. The idea of the spinner bait is it's supposed to be multiple bait fish, not just one. So this is like a little mini A-Rig. So for you guys that aren't there throwing A-Rigs yet, start with the spinner bait. One, two, three baits, right? This is not supposed to just look like one bait. That's why these are so good at catching monster bass. So spinner bait, throw it slow, painted blades, dirty water, Clear uh, willow blades, clean water, and Colorado blades for dirty water, ponds, and stuff like that when you want to cause a lot of commotion. If you're night fishing, Colorado blades. Daytime fishing, clear water with some wind, willow leaf. Before we go on spinner baits, I know I've said that a couple of times, I want to give one little secret away. There's a blade out there that I have not heard anyone talk about, that when I was... 16 through about 25 i used to see it on the shelves the blade has disappeared it's hard to find it's an indiana blade spinner bait best of both worlds it's kind of like a colorado blade in that it has some width to it but it's almost like a willow blade where it's got length to it it's kind of like a teardrop and it causes more vibration than a willow blade and less vibration than a Colorado. That was my secret weapon for almost 10 years, and I can't find it anymore. I mean, I'm sure you can get online and custom order your spinner baits like that, but if you can find an Indiana Blade Colorado, or I'm sorry, if you can find an Indiana Blade spinner bait, pick them up. I don't care what anyone says, I've been throwing spinner baits for 30 years. Indiana Blades are freaking bad. You know, they are where it's at. Colorado's got its uses. Willow's got its. But if I could go with an Indiana blade, I would throw that hands down anytime, every time, almost over the others. Because it combines the two. And it, it's just a very powerful, powerful bait. So we're going to move on. Last but not least is the last two we're going to go over. And we're going to cover top water. So briefly, believe it or not, pre-spawn you can start getting some of the biggest fish in your lake on top water. And one of the ways to do that, use bigger top water baits, not smaller. So you don't want to use something like the Chapo or the, uh, you know, the Whopper Plopper. What I would recommend is a stick bait, like the big one. If you guys have heard of that, it's a giant stick bait, walk the dog baits, stuff like that and work it slow with some pauses and then speed it up and then pause slow and then pause give it some changes and 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 how you're using it get right up shallow and throw it just like the square bill cover water with that thing get down a shoreline bomb your top water as far as you can and work that thing in 5 to 15 20 feet of water right depending make a couple casts in some different ranges because that bait has some draw power and one other thing to use top water when you're at a lake like don pedro and you're in big creek or somewhere and you've got the water right here and you've got these giant trees underneath and they're not sticking up but they're right above or the water's right above. And in other areas, you could see some of the branches of other trees sticking up, new Maloney's, right? Well, when you can get into an area where the branches are just under the water, there'll be some Mondos hanging out in these branch tops, ready to eat trout and bluegill, ready to fatten up for spawn. 
and you use that top water and above those trees and you do it just right you can catch some monsters on a double a double whopper plopper out of new maloney's doing that right over the trees boom it was so awesome i even got a picture of that as a matter of fact i'm gonna post that picture in this video you can see it right now There she is. All right. Now, we're going to go to last but not least, the Ned Rig and Drop Shot. And why I'm spending less time on these last two is, is because there's not as many um, opportunities, so to speak, for them. Top water there is, you know, like I said, you can cover shoreline just like the square bill. Do this in low light conditions when you've got cloud, morning, and afternoon. Right when the sun's setting, when the sun's rising, or or when you have some low light, cloudy conditions, and it's not too crazy windy, but there's some wind. Top water along the shoreline, just cover water, or above those trees. If you can find trees, run that top water over the trees. Magic stuff will happen. All right, now Ned rig and drop shot. So the Cinco is one of the only lures of this whole list that I really talked about fishing slow with. So no matter what, there are going to be those pre-spawn days and those spawn days where the fish are just not cooperating with these other items. When it's bluebird skies, when you had a nasty system move in, or when you had one day it was 75 and now the next day it's 49 degrees. When you have some crazy stuff like this, I will never hesitate if the bite is just not there to go ahead and throw my Ned Rig or Drop Shot. This lure will work all times of the year in all locations. And you can throw many different uh, types of lures on your Ned Rig. Crawls, bugs, Cinco's, full size, shorts, heavyweight, lightweight, lots of different stuff. Drop Shot, one of the things to play with different size worms, different size hooks. You can even use skip gap, you know, those big worm hooks. You can use the gamagachis. You can use all kinds of big hooks even with lures like uh, crawdads and sinkos and, and even swim baits. And you can drop shot that stuff, believe it or not. Another thing to play with is the leader length. Are you using a really short leader? Are you using a really long leader? You know, and then good old robo worms and stuff like that. But don't be afraid to drop shot a Cinco. Don't be afraid to drop shot a fluke or drop shot a lizard. Change up what you're throwing on that thing. It's a very versatile lure. So I hope that today's video helps uh, pre-spawn lures, what I throw, how I throw it, and where I throw it. We're not getting too complicated in this. Just get out there and fish because each one of us has a different style of fishing and we each have our own strengths and weaknesses. And my last comment for you guys would be two, twofold. Fish the moment or, or fish the conditions, what you see and what's going on and fish your strengths, right? It's cool to get out there and practice though and learn new things. But if it really counts, you're in a tournament or you're really chasing those, those big fish, you know, choose what works for you and stick with that. I hope today's video helps. Thanks for watching Common Sense Fishing and we'll see you guys out on the lake. We've got an Eastman video that we've done recently. I don't know if that's coming out before or after this one. We're gonna have the Delta. We have Clear Lake coming up. We have McClure coming up. I'm running a tournament with the guy. Um, we're gonna have some cool videos for you guys. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.